Welcome again. I am Beverly Broome. We go straight into our stories now. ECO, the single currency proposed by West African countries to be used in the regional bloc, will be issued in 2027. This was revealed by the Director of Research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abradu Otu. The ECO currency was originally expected to be used in 2020, but was postponed to 2027 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking at the West African Monetary Agency Technical Committee meeting, Dr. Abradu to urge representatives of the central bank of the various countries to ensure that they meet all the requirements by December 2026. This will enable the full adoption of the common currency to compete on the international market. Emma Davis, Father's Report. ECHO is the name for the proposed common currency of the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. Plans were underway to ensure its introduction in 2020. However, due to some challenges like the COVID-19 pandemic, the common currency was not issued in the West African region. West African central bank governors and finance ministers in the region have converged in Accra to try and finalize work on the introduction of the single currency. Here is Director of research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abredu Otu. In June 2021, here in Accra, the authority of ECOWAS heads of states and government adopted a new roadmap for the launch of the ECO and a new macroeconomic convergence and stability pact. This followed after the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted the planned launch of the ECO in 2022 with the new roadmap, majority of member states must meet all the primary convergence criteria on a sustainable basis by 31st December 2026. This implies that the period 2024 to 2026 is critical if we should make any meaningful progress with the new roadmap. Meanwhile, for the common currency to be implemented, 10 convergence criteria set out by the West African Monetary Institute must be met. Director General of the West African Monetary Agency, Mumudu Bambasaho, explained that no member country had met all the criteria as of 2022, hence the extension of the deadline. In 2022, only two member states, Guinea and Liberia, met the budget deficit criteria. However, performance on the average annual inflation criterion sharply declined, with only Benin and Niger meeting that target. The central bank financing criterion also saw a deterioration in 2022, with four member states missing the target, emphasizing the need for policy reforms. Lastly, while performance on the gross external reserve criterion weakened slightly in 2022, 14 member states still complied, showcasing the region's resilience in that regard. At the end of uh, December 2022, no member state met all four primary convergence criteria. Four member states, Benin, Niger, Guinea, and Liberia, complied with at least three primary convergence criteria. Proponents of the ECHO say the single currency will facilitate trade, lower transaction costs, and facilitate payments amongst ECOWAS's 385 million people. Let's get on Zoom now and speak to economist Professor Peter Quarte on these developments. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time. Introduction of the ECHO by 2027. Visible or uh, should we get uh, or forget about it? According to your discerning uh, viewers, I, I think we should tread cautiously uh, with this um, eco. In as much as it will lead to trade, it will lead to reduction in cost of transacting across the, sub, uh, the continent or the sub-region. I think we are far from reaching that target and therefore ought to be cautious. Uh, we heard from uh, the uh, meeting that not many have been able to even meet the primary convergence criteria. And in fact, since this discussion started, no single country, to the best of my knowledge, has been able to meet the primary convergence criteria 
consistently for three years. So it's something that, yes, it is good, but let's tread cautiously. When Europe did this, when they had a euro, um, yes, we did not meet all the criteria, but Germany served as the anchor. Germany was a very strong big brother, served as an anchor, and was able to help the smaller countries or the weak countries. In our case, Nigeria, which accounts for about 40% of the GDP of the sub-region, um, the question we ask is, would they, do they have the muscle to be able to support these weaker countries? Nigeria itself is having its own challenges uh, as we speak. So I, I think we should tread cautiously. I, I, I'm not very uh, optimistic we'll be able to meet this uh, convergence criteria and have an equal by 2027. States of most of the West African countries, do you think the introduction of this single currency will be very difficult? Well, given the current state, unless things improve significantly, unless our institutions, what we call the soft um, uh, factors, if, if, if they have improved, if our institutions, the nature of our institutions improve, the financial institutions, the legislative institu uh, um, institutions improve significant, significantly, then we can say, yes, we can, despite the fact that we have met all the criteria, we can roll it out. Uh, but currently, as we stand, given uh, the weak macro conditions across the sub-region, given the weak institutions, I, I think we, we ought to reform the institutions and ensure strong macroeconomy before we roll this, this out. So are you suggesting that we, we postpone it for now? I'm not saying we should postpone. What I'm saying is they are, they, we have to do our homework. There's a lot of reforms we need to undertake between now and end 2026. Unless those reforms are adequately carried out, then we should postpone. Right. Uh, but do you share in the view that uh, maybe, just like the euro, those countries that have met the convergence criteria should go ahead and introduce uh, the currency? Well, for, for um, that of Europe, you saw quite a few countries who met the criteria consistently over three years. Germany was a very strong country with an inflation rate of 1% to 2% at the time. Ask yourself, which of the African countries is that strong enough to serve as the anchor? Um, when Greece was facing challenges, Germany was there to provide all the needed support and governance the other European countries. And you ask yourself, would Nigeria be able to do that, given the challenges it is currently going through? So I, I think, um, well, if a few of them are able to meet the criteria consistently over two or three years, then they could go ahead and then the others can come, on, come along. But uh, currently, um, I am being cautiously optimistic in rolling this uh, euro, um, uh, this echo in 2027. At the positive uh, side of uh, introducing this uh, currency, what are the real benefits of the eco to our economy? Great benefits. Now we have the after the African continental free trade area where goods can move in and out um, easily. We can import, we can export without having to convert into another currency. It's not the conversion rate, as you convert from one currency to the other, there is a cost. There is a pressure, even pressure on exchange rate, there is demand pressure and, and many others. I mean, with this, you don't have to have this uh, conversion carry, uh, taking place. Right. Also, because it's easy, because you're trading one currency, it is very quick, swift. You can swiftly move goods from one area to the other. And we take advantage of a larger market. Um, ECOWAS is a big market. We can take advantage of the Nigeria market. We can take advantage of the other markets. And that will boost production. That will boost our exports uh, as well as our revenue base. So there are several other benefits apart from maybe the cost of trading amongst ourselves. Right. Let's move away uh, from talks about this uh, currency and talk about the, uh, the talks around cocoa prices because government is expected to announce new prices for the cocoa season from Friday. What's, what are your thoughts on that, briefly? Well, I, I think um, government would have to factor the rate of inflation uh, 
in announcing the global prices, but government cannot give what it hasn't, it hasn't got or doesn't have. You look at the world price of cocoa, you look at how much um, you are able to um, pay, and then also having net out the cost of um, operations and give us something uh, decent. But you shouldn't give uh, or announce a price that will rather make it run at a loss. Currently, we are running the tight budget, and I don't think this is the time to pay prices above what is available. But having said that, I think it is also announced prices that uh, would encourage farmers to produce, to announce a price that will minimize the incentive to smuggle cocoa to neighboring countries. Well, farmers have said that 72% hike in the prices, what will make them comfortable? You think this is realistic enough? Uh, I don't think that it's achievable. Um, perhaps they should look at something within uh, 40, uh, 30 to 40%. I mean, if you adjust for inflation, I don't think 70% uh, or above is something that, that will be sustainable. But, but again, mm -hmm. um, it all boils down to looking at the numbers. I believe government will have to look at the, uh, the price per ton on the international market. I think currently it's hovering between two, five, three thousand uh, dollars per, per ton. Uh, you should look at that and also look at the, um, the cost of operations and ensure that at least the margins are not too huge, but will pay a price that will make farmers happy. Prof, what could be the implication on the cocoa economy if government is not able to meet the expectation of farmers? I think this, this involves dialogue. I, um, there is a committee that sets the price. In fact, ISA uh, is part of that committee that we meet uh, with Cocoa Board and then with the farmers to discuss the price regime. So it's not something that will come as a surprise. The, the leadership of the uh, the buyers and, and many others are part of this committee and I believe it's a matter of communication. It's better to draw job than to war war. So um, some consensus will be reached um, going forward. I, I don't think um, we will sit down and allow things to deteriorate for farmers to go on strike and, and no, I don't think we'll get to that because they are part of the decision making process. Right. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Peter Corti. He's an economist. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. You're still watching Business Live here on the Joy News channel with me, Beverly Broom. We do some more stories now. And the Ghana Revenue Authority has apprehended about 15 owners of retail outlets and beauty shops in the Ghana East District of the Greater Accra Region. The centers, all located in Hacho, a suburb of Accra, are operating without a value added tax certificate. Some of the managers have been asked to report to the Criminal Investigations Department for questioning. According to the leader of the enforcement team, Assistant Commissioner Joseph Anand, the exercise is taking a different approach. According to the leader of the enforcement team, Assistant Commissioner Joseph Anand, the exercise is taking a different approach as the shop operators and some stakeholders have reached out to the GRA to review the approach. He believes this will eliminate the accusations of selective justice against the team. Now, as we go along with our work, we revise our strategies. What is happening is that in the past, like you rightly said, we do our test cases, which we still do. And then that takes us to wherever we go to. But realize that you go there and then you look at the environs and you see that there are many more, you know, uh, 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 taxpayers who are they qualify to charge the VAT. So then we need to also look at them because many times some of these people we visit, they feel they've been targeted. Because you come to a place, many of them are doing similar, you know, business and then some may even be bigger, but then you, you pick one or two. And the signal it sends is that probably they have been targeted, which is not what actually happens. So this time when we come to an area, we look around, those that are qualified to charge the VAT, we come and then we deal with them. Yes. Some of the offenders have been collecting VAT from customers, but refuse to pay to the GRA. This, according to Mr. Anand, is a serious offense of the law and will be dealt with as a special case. They are not registered. We went to fasty bodies and hair. They are registered, but then they don't have the dispensation to 
issue their own invoice, but they are doing so. Then we came to Wimbo, Leo Enterprise. They also don't have the dispensation. They are a supermarket. Then Meditap Health Shop. They are into food supplements, which are vatable items, but they are not registered to charge VAT. Then we came to Everything Home. They are not registered, but they are charging the VAT, which is a serious crime. And I'm sure when we get to the office, the needed punishment will be exerted on them. Then we came to Calabar Sass Pub. They are also not registered, but they are charging VAT. We will also deal with them as the law requires. The exercise is part of the strategy by the authority to increase revenue for the state. We take a quick break on Business Live. We'll be back with more. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Now, favorable investor sentiments across all sectors drove the performance of the Ghana Stock Exchange in the month of August. According to the summary of market activities, the GSE Composite Index said significantly surpassing the 3,000 points milestone for the first time this year. This resulted in an impressive year-to-date return of 26.22% for investors. Here's more. The GSE Financial Stock. The GSE Financial Stock Index also experienced an uptick in the past month, reducing its year-to-date losses to 14.44%. The top five price gainers for the month were Societe General, Total Energies, Standard Chartered Bank, BOPP, and SIC Insurance. The volume and value traded increased substantially by 163.34% and 581.62% respectively compared to the previous month. Meanwhile, the Ghana fixed income market also ended the month with 5.33 billion in volume traded, a marginal decrease of 3.68% compared to the previous month and a 66.04% decrease from the same time in 2022. 91.76% of activity on the market was made up of trades in short-term government securities. Now, commercial banks have reversed their decision to boycott participation in the Cocoa Bills Exchange Program. This was after it managed to secure some relief from the Bank of Ghana to support the operations. Yes, more in this report. The commercial banks in the letter to Cocoa Board pushed for their participation in the Cocoa Debt Exchange Program to be put on hold. This was after it failed to secure the reliefs that it got after it participated in the first round of the Domestic Debt Exchange Program. Commercial banks had maintained that signing up for the program put a lot of pressure on their operations and therefore they need these reliefs to stay in business and not breach any regulatory requirement by the central bank. Some of these banks had even argued that this development will force them to withdraw funding for the cocoa board activities going forward. The International Advertising Association's African Rising Conference hosted some of Africa's most influential marketing communication professionals has come to an end in Accra. The conference saw a series of speakers deliver presentations on how African businesses and brands can take advantage of current evolutions to, to deliver value. The following report has more. Second and final day of the Af Rising Conference hosted some of the globe's most influential marketing communications professionals. The annual conference discussed key areas African brands can leverage to boost growth of African businesses. Independent marketer Yao Nsako charged marketers to convey narratives which will spare the growth of the continent. All power is, is tempted by the abuse of power. Therefore, marketing must develop strong values and ethics and principles that guide it in what it does and not just succumb to chasing short-term profits at any cost to society to make shareholders happy. We are faced with a battle between degeneration and regeneration as marketeers. If we are engaged with the people, we must stay on the side of regeneration 
to secure the long-term health of society. More liberty, more egalitarian opportunity, more fraternity. Past chairman and world president of IAA, Joel Nete, called for effective marketing to grow tourism revenues. If there's no concerted effort to send out a particular message, we're missing an opportunity. Even around tourism, um, look at our, our, our beaches, look at our um, various tourist destinations. What are we doing? When you get into a particular tourist destination, is there an ecosystem that's built? Is there somebody there who's sell, selling memorabilia? Is there somebody there who has a restaurant? people can benefit from. What, what are we doing in our marketing? And these things are not rocket science. We see them everywhere. Even if we can't originate them ourselves, we can copy with pride. So if your question is, are we doing enough? No. Without a doubt. We're not doing it. I don't think we've even scratched the surface around the things that we can do with marketing to better the lives of our countries, to better the lives of our people, to better the lives of products and brands. The two-day event was held under the theme, Building Future Ready Brands. Now, Access Bank Ghana and Deloitte Ghana have begun the SME Business Interaction Series. The project, which is aimed at helping small businesses with funding, will provide money to expand the operations of 10,000 SMEs. The following report has more. Businesses in Ghana continue to face funding challenges due to the difficult economic conditions faced by the country. To help solve the challenge, Access Bank Ghana and Deloitte Ghana have collaborated to help small businesses access cheap funding. Group Head of Business Banking at Access Bank Ghana, Kafui Bimpe, speaking to Joy Business, said the project is designed to train SME on bookkeeping, taxation and governance. What we see here today is just a continuation of what we have been doing at another level. Um, we are so committed to the development of SMEs, we want to bring them to the level that we see globally, uh, growing them to become multi major multinationals. So over the years we have provided a number of uh, imperatives for them, including migrating them to digital space, including giving them um, market access to market, provided finance to them. Today, we, it's a first of its kind. We started our business interaction series and we have brought on board Deloitte Ghana. Everybody knows Deloitte, the wealth of knowledge they have, the experience, the exposure they have. So we are bringing that to the SMEs to just help them build capacity to be able to develop further. He advised SMEs to develop skills acquired from the workshop to expand their businesses. They should expect significant growth in their business through uh, the superior knowledge that will be shared, through the tools that will be given them by Deloitte and Touche, and the fact that we will also be able to continue to support them in terms of giving them finance. It is not worth giving them money when they don't have capacity to scale up their business or when they cannot derive the full benefits of getting those funds. And that's how we wrap up tonight. For more business news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. I am Beverly Broom. Thanks so much for your time. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.